All right, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on 2019. Um, free response question. All right, um, no calculator, number three. And we're going to be looking at number C and D, number C and D. We'll start with number C, letter C first. Um, in letter C, it's asking us to find the absolute minimum values given that G of X is defined by this function right here. All right, so what do we know? Well, first off, if you're asked to find absolute mins, okay, we know that this function right here appears to be, um, well, it is continuous, all right? Um, and therefore, G is also continuous. Uh, <clears throat> we have some different values we could find on this. And so, um, and knowing that each one has a derivative, so that, that's what we know there. So this, we can use extreme value theorem. So in order to figure this out, we want to figure out what is the G of negative 2, and we also want to figure out what is g of 5, all right, g of 5, all right, and find out those various values, okay? And, and going through and doing this, well, we know that um, g of negative 2, well, if I plug this in here, that's going to be the integral from negative 2 to negative 2, all right, of f of t dt. And when you integrate from negative 2 to 2, that's going to equal 0. So we're going to have 0 there, all right, so no value there. Um, we know that g of 5, well, we found this out in the previous problem a little bit, all right, because we went from um, negative 2 to negative 6, or negative 6 to negative 2, and so that helped us out. So we were finding this area right here. We know those canceled out. We found this area right there, which we know is going to equal, all right, because we can plug in here negative 2 to 5 of f of t, 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 and that's where we're finding this area. And so what we have is um, one or negative one fourth, and then we can find out this area right here as we did before. All right, that's going to be plus. Okay, um, we have one half. This is going to be three halves. This right here is one two three times three, and we have nine fourths for that one. Okay, and then we said okay, we're going to add in this other portion right there. And so we want to find out this portion. Well, what we did was we found the whole entire rectangle there and we subtracted out our area of our circle. So we're going to negate out this portion right there. So um, to do that, um, we're going to take and we know this is going to be nine. All right. Nine is our total area. Okay. Uh, get this smaller. Sorry about that. All right. Nine. And we're going to subtract um, out of this nine um, this value right there, which is going to be, all right. Um, one fourth of pi r squared, and r is three squared, so it's going to be nine. Okay, and we have that. Simplifying this right here, we can go through and we can determine that, okay, um, this is going to equal negative one fourth. We have right here, it's going to be plus nine fourths. And then we have um, uh, nine and minus this right here. 9 fourths pi. Okay, so in doing so, um, this is going to be 2, all right, well, this is going to be 8, 8 divided by 2, 2, 11, 11 minus 9 fourths pi, okay, and we have that value. Now, the other values we want to find out, okay, so we have 0, and we have this other one, which is a 11 and negative 9 fourths pi. Now, the question is, what is going to be our absolute maximum value, absolute maximum value? Uh, knowing that we have this right here, okay, I'm going to just erase that. Um, the question is, is this value right here going to be um, 5 going to be our absolute max? Well, knowing at this different levels, we know that because we want to find our critical points. So if we find g prime, g prime is going to equal f of x, okay? So now we're going to find our CP. We're going to test those out. So when does g prime equal 0? Well, g prime equals zero here at negative one, and we also have right here, which is, appears to be at one half, all right, one half. And so we know our critical points are going to be at, once again, at um, negative one, and when x equals one half. So we want to verify what are the values here at g of um, negative one and g of one half. All right, and we want to test those. So what we're looking for is, are we testing out those values? Well, we know right here, this has to be a min, 
Okay, this has to be a min right there. Um, <coughs> because we're going from G changes from positive to negative. So this one, all right, um, and we could find out that value pretty easily. So if we find out this, we realize that this portion right there is simply just going to equal, all right, um, negative, uh, actually not negative, um, one fourth. Okay, we know that value is going to equal um, one fourth. Okay, um, is that right? Yeah, or actually, no, I apologize. Um, one times one times one half. It'd be one half. I apologize. All right. Um, we know that this then going into here, so starting right there is going to be one half, one half. And then this value right there, so this is going to be, um, well, I guess the question is three, three times right here. Is this value going to be positive or negative? Um, 11 minus, no, sorry, continue on. Let's find a one half right here. So at this value right there, we're going to add the one half. And then we have a negative one half, which would be zero. So this one right here, which we know is going to be negative one fourth. So this is negative one fourth, all right? Negative one fourth is right there. Okay, so comparing all these values, all right, um, we have one half, negative one fourth. The question is, is this value going to be greater than one half? Well, if you look at this, that appears to be true, all right, because there is a bunch more area underneath this graph right here, positive area, than this negative area. So yes, my friends, if we're looking for an absolute max, it would be at the end point of at five. And so um, find the absolute maximum value of G on the interval from negative two to five, justify your answer. And for that, we know that this value right there, okay, um, is going to be our uh, total value, okay, our total value. And if you have um, this portion, all right, um, and, and going through and finding what that value is going to be, um, that value right there should be, um, if this was our function, like so, this value is going to equal that, okay? And so we have, this is going to be our answer right there, okay? So that was going to be our answer. That's our absolute max, all right? Um, find that absolute value, just for our answer, all right? And our answer would be um, g of 5 equaling 11 minus 9 fourths pi um, is the absolute Max, all right, oops, absolute max. Um, because, all right, um, um, g of five is greater than all other, all right, endpoints or all other values on the, on, <laughs> and then all other values on the interval. All right, I'm um, going from negative two to five. All right, and including that interval. And that's what we do. And we, and we prove this right here um, by testing out our critical points and all of our endpoints, and that's what we got there, okay? So that's pretty neat. Um, the next thing we wanna do is let's look at part D, part D right there. And so to figure out part D, okay, we're asked to find the limit. So to find this limit, normally when we find limits, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug in the values in there. So we have the limit as X approaches one, we're gonna plug in 10, we're gonna plug in one right there. We have three and we have F prime of one. All right, F prime of one. All right, and then we're gonna have right there is gonna be um, F of one. And then we have minus arc tangent of one. Okay, so we just have to find out if this turns to be a value. So we have 10 minus three times, well, F prime of one. Well, F prime means it's a slope at one. All right, so excluding one um, on the graph of F on F. Okay, so if we look at the graph of F right here, and we look at one, we realize that this is a value right there. So we can find out what that slope is. It appears to be a positive slope. And it's going to go up one, two, over one. 
So it'd be um, a slope of two. All right, it appears to be a slope of two. All right, so that's going to be two. So three times two. On the bottom, we have f of one, f of one, f of one. All right, um, is going to equal one. All right, f of one is one because this is f, and here's our value right there. So f of one is one. All right, so we have one minus our tangent. Our tangent of one we know is going to be pi over four. All right, so you got to know your circle chart. All right, from the unit circle. So that is going to equal this. And so what we have here is going to be 10 minus 6, which is 4, all right, over 1 minus pi over 4. And that would be our solution. You can try to simplify this, but I think they would accept that. All right, and that would be our answer. All right, using what we know about slopes and derivatives and limits and plugging those in is a pretty basic problem, and that's what we get for our solution. So let's round up. If you have absolute maximums, make sure you test your endpoints. All right, and your critical points, all right, to determine what those values are um, so that when you find the values at these points, because then you have to find the values because you're asking for an absolute or maximum value, all right, we can then determine, okay, which one has the maximum of all the different values. And we notice that G of 5 does. We saw that from the graph. We found what that value was, and we can determine that's what it is by simply just finding all the values, all right, using extreme values there. Okay, so right here, as a, because it's greater than all of the values in the interval there, um, using extreme value theorem, base theorem, as f is, all right, or g is, it's continuous, and, all right, closed, all right, um, on that interval. So, that's what we know. All right, there you go. Good luck and God bless the rest of the problems.